covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. The Department of Homeland Security is said on Tuesday that a U.S.-based natural gas facility had to shut down operations for two days after sustaining a ransomware infection that prevented personnel from receiving crucial real-time operational data from control and communication equipment. The advisory didn't identify the site except to say that it was a natural gas a natural gas compression facility. Such sites typically use turbines, motors, and engines to compress natural gas so that it can be safely moved through pipelines. The attack started with a malicious link in a phishing email that allowed attackers to pivot from the facility's IT network to the facility's OT network, which is the operational technology hub of servers that control and monitor physical processes of the facility. With that, both the IT and OT networks were infected with ransomware. Mm. The attack knocked out crucial control and communications gear that on-site employees depend on to monitor the physical processes. The infection didn't spread to programmable logic controllers, which actually control compression equipment, and it didn't cause the facility to lose control of operations. The advisory explicitly said that, quote, at no time did the threat actor obtain the ability to control or manipulate operations, end quote. Okay. So even though they weren't able to control operations, it's still really scary. I I have to kind of bite my tongue on that statement because it kind of feels like one of those where they're, oh, well, they didn't, they weren't actually able to take control. Well, they really were. Yeah. Maybe they they just didn't do it yet. (laughs) Maybe they didn't take control and blow something up. Sure. But they had control. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I don't know if I like that statement. And ransomware is, uh, we can be really complacent and say, it's just the encryption of my files. No, they had to get that in somehow. And how did they get that in? In this case, an email file. Right. So that email file contained ransomware, which encrypted our files. Okay. What else did it do? What else could could it have done? Mm-hmm. Could it have installed a gigabyte motherboard driver that is exploitable? <laughs> right. That has like a backdoor in it that allows them into our network and into our OT network and then into our actual controllers? Mm-hmm. You don't really know. Like that's really complacent to state unless you've got data to back it. Unless you can legitimately say... This was strictly this infection. We've found the infiltration point. We've locked it down. We've blocked every instance. But I've had computers come in for service where they said, oh, I, I accidentally fell for a phishing scam. And they installed a, they started controlling my computer. Yep. Yeah. And then we found after, is so, okay, they thought they were safe. But then we found that there was like backend software that was running as, um, as, um, services in the background. There was no uninstaller for it. It was just a service running on the computer that allowed them to remote in at any time and take control of the computer, which they're only going to do at two o'clock in the morning while you're sleeping. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what's happening. How many people would notice? Now, can you just as a precaution, I mean, I'm not saying that (laughs) this is the answer. Just turn your computer off at night. Would that be okay? In a, in a home environment. Sure, oh, but not in right? a business but environment. When it's controlling the flow of propane. <laughs> yeah. It probably want to leave it running. Yeah. Yeah. It's just sad that this is still becoming a regular story. Every like, single week. All the it's time. like, come on. How many times do we have to hear this before we go, yeah. hey, the world finally got it. And it always seems to be the big companies or the governments yeah. that are getting hit by it. It's like, now and, granted, those are the ones that make the news. Mm-hmm. True. But still, it's like, you're a bigger target. And I think, Jeff, and maybe we can, you know, maybe this is a discussion to be had in the comments below, but I think that these big targets, and forgive me, if if you're in the IT departments in these companies, forgive me, I, I don't mean this as a jab, but it's a, it's a truth. It's a sad truth that we were educated 10, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And we've been in the industry for that long. And and some of us in the IT department 
not myself, of course, but some <laughs> of us are on the verge of retirement. And that's, again, not a jab. I entirely respect what you do. However, malware has evolved yes. right. significantly, significantly. Mm -hmm. What we're encountering now is not Natus. We're not dealing with BSVs. We're not dealing. When was the last time you ever saw a BSV? And if you know what a BSV is, then you, you're, you're this. I'm speaking to you. Yeah. It's not about those anymore. No. Now it's the evolution back in 2017 when WannaCry dropped and we started seeing ransomware infiltrating networks and we started seeing RDP attacks and, and Eternal Blue being ex exploited and, and all of these kinds of things. That's when the cybersecurity industry woke up and said, okay, we need to re-educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if we haven't since then, and, and if we're still thinking in that old mindset where viruses is, is, is our threat, I'm sorry to say that viruses are not our threat. When was the last time yeah. we ever heard of a virus infiltration? It truly is. It's amazing. been a long time. Well, they'll still go, I don't want viruses. It's like, yeah, if yeah. that's your biggest concern. I have antivirus. I'm safe. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you heard of a virus right. infection? <sighs> I haven't got a virus infection because I have antivirus. No, I'm just, just they, saying they that's that's anymore. an old school yeah. way of thinking, and it's a dangerous way of thinking because that's that's how yeah. these big industries are getting hit yep. because we've got that old school thinking and we're not adequately educating and protecting ourselves. And it comes down, you know, it comes down to the C-suite as well, educating our staff and making sure that there are cybersecurity professionals that are brought in as consultants. And mm -hmm. DLPs put in place to be able to protect our networks from today's threats, not yes, not yesterday's, not 1999's threats. Now I know we have to get to the uh, the next story, but is part of this a budgetary component? Surely, like yeah. they're looking at it, going, yeah. oh, "Oh, we can only one, put in one yes. percent total budget for cybersecurity," when really they should be looking at ten percent. Like, and, and not that there's a defined number, but. Like the way that things grow, it's like you have to grow with the threats. Mm -hmm. And if that means allocating more of your budget to more cybersecurity to protect your investments and your industry, uh, whatever you're doing, you, you got to adjust the budget accordingly. You can't just stick with mm -hmm. that same number and be like, well, we've got our subscriptions. We updated that. And, oh, well, we've got an old computer we got to replace. So that's our budget. It's like, no, you got to it, think. It's beyond. exactly the same mindset, though, Jeff. It's, yeah. it's that word I use, complacent. Mm -hmm. We've become complacent because uh, we're so used to the old way. Yep. When things change, we have to change with it, plain and simple. Otherwise, you're going to be We're just going to be reading these stories. We're, we're all under attack. Sorry. We are yeah. all under attack. Are you going to be susceptible to the attack? Right. Are you going to fall victim? Or are you going to be a, a brick wall that they can't penetrate? Mm -hmm. We're all under attack. This is 2020. Do you remember the books when we were kids? 2020 is the future. Hello. <laughs> Here we are. Yes, we're there. <laughs>